Hey guys, welcome back. It's Friday, and so you know what time it is. It's What The Fitness. Last week, I feel like may have been the climax, you could say, of What The Fitness. How do we top that? What do we got this week? Well, we don't have anything vile. No warning signs coming up. But you will see a good friend of yours. Oh boy. Oh, Dr. Eric Berg. Have we have we ever have we covered him yet? I don't think we have. I think we did in the other series, not this one. Oh, okay. Sweet. Sweet. So I had this question come up that I wanted to answer. Will eating too little damage my metabolism? So let's say you're doing fasting, or then when you eat you're having a certain amount of calories and it's maybe you feel that it's not enough, is that going to slow your metabolism down? And this person also mentioned that they were told that small frequent meals will stoke the metabolism. It'll, it'll keep the flame going. You need to eat every three hours, okay? Which is completely not true at all. If you're doing a low calorie- Well, I'll give it to Berg. His first statement is actually accurate. We are, 33 seconds into a video, and that might be the longest that he's ever gotten to a video and not said something false. So, it really depends on what's happening with insulin. Because and the bullshit starts. Slow metabolism or a stuck set point where you can lose weight but you can't seem to get below a certain point is higher levels of insulin. Ah, uh, it uh, wrong. That's actually not true. And it's interesting that these guys get so hung up on insulin. Did you know that whey protein has a higher insulinogenic response than white bread? If insulin was the cause of all this, how are people on high protein diets able to lose fat? Specifically what's creating that is insulin resistance. And that's created by years of consuming a lot of refined carbohydrates or just eating too frequently. Actually, you can induce insulin resistance by overfeeding fats. I would argue there's actually more data to show that overeating fats causes insulin resistance than overfeeding carbohydrates. Now that being said, either one will do it equally as well. It's mostly about over consuming calories, putting on too much body fat. As your body fat rises, it secretes things like adipokines uh, and that can actually cause insulin resistance, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. I'm really kind of being very simplistic here. No, just eating carbs does not cause insulin resistance. Otherwise, where are all these type two diabetic elite athletes that eat over 400 grams of carbohydrate a day? If you have insulin resistance, you have higher amounts of insulin, okay, in the background, the doctor never checks it, they're looking at the blood sugars, so it's not gonna show up necessarily right off the bat, but the high insulin is the hormone that prevents your weight loss. So if we want to fix the metabolism. It's actually not true. So uh, type two diabetics in research studies lose just as much, if not more weight than uh, people who are not type two diabetic. Very interestingly, they talk about insulin resistance and how insulin resistance raises insulin and that makes you fat. It, you're insulin resistant, not in just muscle tissue. You're also insulin resistant in fat tissue when you're type two diabetic. That means insulin doesn't have the same effect on fat tissue and you're actually not as efficient at storing body fat once you've gotten that fat and that insulin resistant. So when you're insulin sensitive, you're actually more efficient at storing body fat. So this, the whole pretext to this is false in and of itself. We need to fix this right here. We need to fix this right here. And guess what? Fasting corrects insulin now, a because it induces a calorie deficit in some people. Low calorie diet, correct insulin resistance? It depends what you eat. Are you doing carbs? Yes or no? If you're doing yes, then this low calorie diet is going to not correct this. It's <laughs> going to not. <laughs> so there's only a lot of studies showing that a diet that is reduced in calories, but higher carbohydrate, and by higher carbohydrate, I mean above 50% of calories from carbohydrate, arbitrary based on my definition, but hey, that it can actually reduce the incidence of type two diabetes if people lose weight and they're in a calorie deficit. Da da da! Not to fix your metabolism. And then the other point 
Fix your metabolism. So notice how charlatans like this like to use really nebulous terms. Fix your metabolism. Metabolism is the summation of all metabolic reactions that occur in your body. When we discuss metabolic rate, that is the amount of energy that your body consumes on a daily basis or the amount that your body needs on a daily basis. Uh, also can be expressed as total daily energy expenditure, um, which can be broken down into your basal metabolic rate, then your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, your TEF, your exercise activity, those different subsections. Spoiler alert, there is no research that shows that low carb diets are better for increasing your metabolic rate or preventing the decline in metabolic rate in response to calorie restriction. There's no evidence that intermittent fasting is better for that. And I, I know what angle he's gonna take on this, which I can't wait to destroy when it happens. Just watch, just watch. Nutrients, like even when you're doing fasting, when you eat a meal, if it's nutrient dense, then Again, another nebulous term, nutrient dense. Which nutrients, Eric, and how do they exert that effect? He's not gonna tell you because it's bullshit. Okay, so that just showed how many nutrients are you getting, that he's getting vitamins and minerals. There's no evidence that these vitamins and minerals have an impact on your metabolic rate. None, none that I'm aware of anyway. Somebody can correct me if they want. Um, I've never seen it. If these are the nutrients he's saying are going to prevent that decline in metabolic rate, where is his evidence? Is it a good idea to eat foods dense in, in vitamins and minerals? Sure, is it gonna protect your metabolism? No, that's bullshit. Dense meal, or is it just something called dirty keto, where you're not really paying dirty attention keto. to nutrients, because sooner or later, who wants to do some dirty keto? And that's what's gonna slow the metabolism down. Okay, so he's saying, if you are deficient in these nutrients, it will slow the metabolism down. Once again, where is your evidence, Dr. Berg? You don't have any, because it doesn't exist, because you're full of shit. Oh, slow the thyroid down. Hmm. The only nutrient you could argue could slow the thyroid down, I believe, would be iodine. But I, I don't think that people who are having difficulty losing weight, that all of them are deficient in iodine. Uh, there's no evidence to suggest that. There's just no evidence of this. That which can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. People who do low nutrient density diets don't do low calorie diets. If you're eating, what he's talking about is basically eating ultra processed refined foods. If you're doing that, you're not eating a low calorie diet. It doesn't matter if you think you are, you're not. So there's actually research to show that in 24 hours, a 24 hour fast, that your metabolic rate actually declines. Not a ton, but how does this logic work? Eating lower amounts of calories slows down your metabolism, but eating nothing doesn't slow down your metabolism. Are y'all this fucking dense? No, no there's, no, there's no evidence of that. Do I think that intermittent fasting is worse for metabolic slowing than a Weekly calorie equated caloric restriction diet. No, I think it's just another tool in the toolbox. But this idea that intermittent fasting is going to somehow protect, protect your metabolism, again, nebulous terms, uh, there's no evidence to suggest that. What he's talking about, well, what he's trying to talk about, and he's doing a really shit job at it, is he's talking about metabolic adaptation. When you lower your calories down, your body responds by lowering your non-exercise adaptive thermogenesis, or sorry, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, and lowering your basal metabolic rate. That is an attempt to protect you from starvation. It's one of our built-in uh, survival mechanisms. What sense would it make that it wouldn't protect you if you weren't eating anything? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Your carbs low. 
Again, nutrients. All right, so he, he never actually brings up what I thought he was going to bring up, which is the, the fact that if you're fasting, you put out ketones, which ketones are protein sparing. Yes. Guess what's more protein sparing than ketones in the literature? Carbohydrates, because insulin is an anti proteolytic, meaning insulin inhibits protein breakdown or degradation. Further, insulin does not do some of the things he claimed. In fact, if anything, when you inject insulin into animals, for example, there's some evidence that it increases energy expenditure and decreases food intake. I'm not saying that eating sugar is going to make you satiated. That's not what I'm saying. But his claims are false. Uh, and do I have to point out the fact that he's a chiropractor. He has no background in nutrition or metabolism whatsoever. He used a bunch of nebulous terms in an attempt to sound smart. He was trying to talk about metabolic adaptation, but doesn't even understand it and used again, nebulous terms like high nutrient density. Eric, I submitted a challenge to you. Which nutrients are you referring to? And what is the mechanism by which they protect your metabolism? I await your response. All right, guys, that's it for this week. I'll catch you next week where we bust my bullshit. If you're a keto zealot or a fasting zealot and you hate me talking about this stuff because it just makes you so angry, make sure you click the links in the description. Buy some of my shit because I hate it when you do that. Catch you next week.